Once again, I'm taking a look back on random horrors from yesteryear. This time, it's a devious little nugget of sleaze called Pigs. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below, share this video with all of your social media addicted pals, click subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Pigs, aka Daddy's Deadly Darling, Daddy's Little Darling, Daddy's Girl, The Thirteenth Pig, Menu for Murder, Blood Exorcist, Blood Pen, and Horror Farm. Man, that's a lot of names was released in 1973. It's available to rent on Amazon Prime, and it was re-released on DVD from Trauma, as well as Vinegar Syndrome. It was directed and written by Mark Lawrence, and it stars Tony Lawrence, Mark Lawrence, Jesse Vint, and Paul Hickey. This exploitation horror film is all kinds of wrong, which means, to me, it's all kinds of right. Pigs mixes rape, murder, cannibalism, bad music, bad acting, and of course pigs into one insane hodgepodge of madness and bad taste. The film Stars was written and directed by Mark Lawrence, whose film credits include From Dusk Till Dawn, Marathon Man, The Man with the Golden Gun, and The Asphalt Jungle. He wrote and directed Nightmare in the Sun, which I haven't seen yet, but after seeing pigs, I think I'm going to seek it out. Here he plays Zambrini, the owner of a diner and a pig farm, which catches the eye of some snooping neighbors who question what Zambini feeds his pigs to make them so big and aggressive. When a woman arrives at the diner out of the blue, it's revealed that the suspicions of Zambrini's neighbors were pretty spot on. But before Zambrini is introduced, we're told some backstory of the woman, Lynn, played by Lawrence's real-life daughter, Tony Lawrence. After killing her own rapist father, Lynn is committed to the most poorly guarded insane asylum I've ever seen. Of course, Lynn escapes and finds herself at the Zambrini farm. So on top of the murderous butcher owning the diner, you've now got an escaped man-killer hired on as a waitress there. When customers and the local sheriff start asking questions, both Zambrini and Lynn start offing folks in their own different ways, making the threat a double one. Though the plot is somewhat convoluted, Pigs turns out to be a pretty straightforward tale of revenge, madness, and secrets. Zambrini and Lynn are seemingly drawn to one another, respecting each other's secrets, and trying to cover for one another when outsiders pry too much. The tone of this film is dour, to say the least, and like many grindhousers, there's an air of sleaze, especially since the story is about a father raping his daughter being played out by a real-life actual father and daughter. It's even creepier that Lynn is in ill-fitting and scantily clad for most of the film. The scene where Lynn dreams that Zambrini is attacking her with a straight razor is given another level of squirminess, given the relationship between these two actors. Though the production value and acting in this film leaves a lot to be desired, I have to give Lawrence credit for giving Pigs an absolutely creepy vibe from start to finish. Lawrence uses extreme close-ups, unconventional edits, repeat frames, fisheye lenses, and bizarre camera angles to cause a palpable sense of unease, claustrophobia, and paranoia. This film feels like it's being seen through a fractured psyche from another reality. The way Lawrence mixes pig squeals with human screams really is effectively disturbing. Pigs is less about actual pigs and more about messed up people, specifically how mostly all the men in the cast chauvinistically objectify Lynn as soon as they meet her. I'd recommend this freaky little number to any fan of Twisted Grindhouse Theater. Though the gore is low on pigs, it's reported that the director used chunks of carved bread made to look like human limbs in the feeding scenes. The director also says that pieces of bacon were handed out to the audience at the premiere of Pigs. Now that's my kind of twisted filmmaker. The music by Charles Bernstein is creepy as hell too. The title song, Somebody is Waiting for You, is horribly catchy, and the nursery rhyme background singing really gets under your skin. Released a year before Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 
Pigs shares a lot of the same grungy, grimy themes as the Toby Hooper classic, as well as some similarities with another TCM knockoff and another classic, Motel Hell. Add in those elements with some very perverse themes of its own and a morbid little story, and you've got something sleazily special. Pigs has been re-released by Troma, and it got a Vinegar Syndrome release, which features lost opening and closing footage added on to some drive-in features, one of them including Lynn inexplicably being possessed by a demon in the opening credits. This was done most likely to take advantage of the exorcist craze sweeping the cinemas at the time. If you've seen Pigs, you won't forget it. If you haven't, do yourself a favor and track down this grindhouse gem. Your reality, your 